everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. I do have to apologize. I am feeling a little bit under the weather, but I did want to share this Christmas card with you that I created recently for a Christmas card exchange that I did. So this was a really fun card. Let's take a look. So to start, I have an A2 size folded card and a piece of watercolor cardstock cut to the same size. I'm using the Snow Cool stamp set from Lawn Fun. This is really cute. I've used this before um, quite a few times, including this year. I'll link some videos in the cards. And I'm going to use my core watercolor set as well for this. I love the vibrancy. This is my color chart I created, mixing all of the colors together. And so I can get an idea of what colors I need to mix to get the background colors that I want to use. I'm going to use Nina Solar White cardstock for stamping. And I have some pink metallic cardstock that I picked up from Michaels to put on the background as well. And using Memento Tuxedo Black ink and an acrylic block for stamping. So I'm going to work out the composition first. This is on the watercolor paper. So I kind of just want to figure out where I want to lay down colors, what space I have, and what space I need to leave for the stamps. I'm going to use some frisket or some masking fluid. This is um, common with watercolor. The color, um, the version I have is tri-art and it's blue. So it makes it really easy to see when I put it down where that um, paper is going to be preserved. I have an old brush from the dollar store that I keep just for using the frisket. It's basically like a glue and it will muck your brushes up, some fierce. So you want to make sure that you just keep a separate brush just for this stuff. And so it's really liquidy. It's really easy to use. You just put it on the paper. And so what I want to do is create some snowflakes and I want it to be very organic and kind of blocky. So I don't want these to be very perfect round snowflakes. I want them to look kind of chunky and different shapes different sizes, some bigger ones, some smaller ones, and just a variance all around the page. So I find this really easy to achieve with my brush because I've used it before and it is all gummed up so it doesn't have a perfectly fine tip which makes it great for making this kind of shape of snowflakes. So I'm just spreading those around in the top half of my card. I'm going to make the background just in that upper area with the watercolor. So once I have all my snowflakes in place, I will have to set this aside to dry. It does take a little while. I believe I left it for about an hour. Um, I just walked away and did some other things in the house and then came back to it and it was dry completely by that time. And you'll want to make sure you rinse out your brush really good too, as best as you can, um, just to keep some of that frisket out so it doesn't harden in the bristles. So now when it's dry, it will also be blue but you'll be able to tell that it is dry. And so I'm gonna take a look at the colors that I wanna use. I really like these pinks and purples. I wanna do something really fun and bright and a little bit different. So looking at the colors that I need, I'm going to come in with the quinacridone magenta and dioxazine purple, and I just wanna put a touch of transparent pyrrole orange into my blend as well. So I'm gonna do a gradient with those three colors. So to get them started, I'm just going to drop some water into each of the pans to get the colors activated. I have an eyedropper that I'd normally use to do this, but sometimes it's just easier to use my brush as well. Um, and I have a round brush, so that makes it easier. I'm going to put some of the color on a working palette on the side. This is just um, an acrylic palette, or it's like a, maybe not an acrylic, it's like a plastic, uh, just a craft palette. And so I'm putting some of the quinacridone magenta and then I want to put a touch of that transparent pyrrole orange. I'm going to blend these together but I don't want a perfect blend because I do want that variegated color um, and that mix of the pink and the orange blending together on my, on my palette as well as in my artwork. Now this is the brush I'm going to use to put the paint on the paper. This is my new Princeton quill brush that my sister got me and it is beautiful. It's so gorgeous to work with. It does hold a lot of water, so I have it loaded up and just picking up some of the color from my palette. I'm going to bring in that transparent pyrrole orange blend first at the bottom and then put a little bit of the quinacridone magenta working towards the center and top areas. Now I want to make sure I get all of the area of my masking and so I just nudge my stamps down a little bit to create some room there so I can get all of my masking area in my painting. So I have my first layer. I do want to make those colors more rich and a little bit more um, saturated with pigment. So I'm going to come in with some dabs just from my paint pans. And so a little bit of orange near the bottom, a little bit of that quinacridone magenta at the top, and just having those colors meet in separate areas around the artwork. 
So I don't want to do a perfect blend. I don't want to have one color at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. I'm just going to dip in and out. So while I wait for that to dry, I'm going to do my stamps. And so I'm going to come in with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and this is on Nina's Solar White cardstock, which is great for using with Copic markers because they blend really nicely on this cardstock. So I'm going to stamp out each of my penguins, and I want to stamp out the little snow penguin as well. He's really cute, and he'll be a nice focal point in the scene. I have a little ice cream cone, and I'm going to make my snow penguin a girl, so I stamped out a bow for her as well. So while I do the coloring, I will spare you from listening to me talk in my sick voice, and I'll just put on some music, and you can watch the coloring, and then I'll join you after.
So now I have everything almost colored up and ready to go. I kept really light colors overall and made the penguins the same colors just to keep everything kind of balanced, not too jarring or too left field on the coloring. So now I'm going to put my card base together. I have a little mark on my card, but it shouldn't make a difference because I'm going to put this backing on it, this pearlized pink paper. So I'm using my tape roller and I have my card base all taped up and I'm just going to put that onto the back of the pearlized pink paper and then trim it with my X-Acto knife and ruler just to get those nice crisp edges. So this is nice and easy and then once that's done I have the base prepared and I'm ready to start building the scene. So I'm going to come in with that watercolor paper. It's not quite done yet. We do need to remove that masking fluid. So I'm going to take a white eraser, but I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and rub the eraser clean of any graphite that it has on it first so that I don't get that on my watercolor paper. Once I have my eraser ready, I'm just going to rub it around over top of the liquid frisket, the masking fluid, and it removes really easily. It's kind of like an elastic-y plastic feel. Um, but it, it balls up like an eraser shaving wood very easily. So I'm just taking those off and I can see all my snowflakes. They look so cute underneath and it's exactly the effect that I wanted. Those organic kind of rough blocky shapes of snowflakes or snow pellets, I guess, or something. Um, it looked really great. It's exactly what I wanted. So now that I have that done, I have this ready to go ahead with. Now I want to trim it down because it is the same size as my card base and I want to see that pink pearlized paper poking up from underneath. So I need to make this watercolor paper a bit smaller to create that border. So just giving a quick check, not quite satisfied with it, I'm going to trim it a little bit more with my paper cutter. And then it should be good to go. I like this balance, I think that looks really good. So now I can start building my scene. I'm going to use my tape roller. I might also have used foam tape at this point but I do need to send it through the mail and I wanna make sure that it gets there safely. Our mail is really fussy about the depth of our envelopes for some reason. So I just wanna make sure that this has no problem. So I did put it on with tape instead of with foam tape, but you could do both. So putting that into place now, I'm ready to start bringing in my little critters and building that scene, they're so fun. And so I am gonna use foam tape for this, so it'll just be that single layer of foam tape and not double layer. Now I was trying the ice cream cone and I couldn't really find a spot where I felt that it worked. I felt that it was kind of creating a double focal point. My snow penguin is, or penguin snowman, is kind of the focal point of my scene and I found that that ice cream was just kind of competing with it and so I just decided to leave it out. I'm going to use VersaFine ink for stamping. Now this is really good to create to create very fine stamping, especially with sentiments and fine detailing. And because I'm stamping on watercolor paper, there's a lot of texture and ridges. I want to make sure that my stamp gets a nice crisp impression. I don't think I would achieve that as well with the Memento ink. So I'm going to use the VersaFine in Onyx Black and that should work really well. Or black, I'm not sure if it's called Onyx Black. I'll put the links in the description below. Building off the largest letter first, or the largest phrase first, and then building my sentiment around that largest word, um, I'm able to get the best balance. So now I'm ready to start assembling everything, putting it together in the scene, and it's really exciting. This is my favorite part. You get to see the card come together and all the ideas that you had. You get to see it in real life, which is really fun. Now when I come in with these pieces, I am going to use my X-Acto knife just to make sure I get them positioned exactly where I want them. I find that's just the easiest way for me to eyeball center of the area and so I don't end up putting it a little bit crooked or a little bit too much to one side. I find that's the easiest for me. Now to put the little bow on my snow penguin or penguin snowman, I'm going to use some craft glue. Just that piece is really tiny, I don't want to cut anything specific or try to do a tape roller on that. So I find craft glue works really good and it, dry, it dries pretty quickly and I love this brand of craft glue because it has a great seal. It adheres and sticks really well. So here's the final card. It was so pretty and I had so much fun making it. I love watercolors and these core paints are just so yummy and bright and it just gave a really fun background and something unusual and different but to create that holiday card. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, thanks for sticking with me through this terrible voiceover, and I hope you give this video a thumbs up if you did. And be sure to subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos to my channel. Merry Christmas, everyone.